We begin with exclusive CNN reporting from Sri Lanka. Just a short time ago, we learned one of the Easter suicide bombers had been arrested before and then released. Now, he's the one who blew himself up at the Cinnamon Grand Hotel, and we know his brother on the right here was also one of the attackers. Their father is a wealthy spice trader. He's the man there in the middle. He now is in police custody. So Ivan Watson joins us from Colombo. Ivan, good to have you on the show because I want you to talk us through some of these new details, but you've also interviewed the Prime Minister and have some exclusive uh, details from that. So just explain uh, what we know. Yeah, I, I interviewed the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka during what has been just such a, a terrible week for this country. And he had some startling revelations for us when I asked him about the profiles of the bombers who have killed at least 359 people and wounded more than 500 more. They are middle class, upper middle class, well educated, educated abroad. That is surprising because they've been looking at other places for possible ISIS connections. But these people are also known and they were being monitored by the intelligence. They, they were being monitored? They were being monitored by the intelligence. Some of the suicide bombers? Some of, some of them, yes. And yet they were still able to carry out these deadly attacks? Yeah, they said they, said they didn't have sufficient evidence to take them in. The Prime Minister is saying these people, some of them were being monitored for hate speech and thus they were not brought in. He acknowledged and his government has apologized for this, that there was a breakdown within the security apparatus about trying to uh, avert or prevent these horrific attacks. I would argue a systemic breakdown since CNN's reporting has found that Indian intelligence warned that this was coming. You have moderate Muslim uh, imams who warned about these particular suspects. Warnings coming from a lot of different directions and yet they were able to carry out these attacks against so many targets and destroyed so many, many lives. Yeah, Robert. I mean, spectacularly uh, problematic in the way this played out from the intelligence and government point of view. Uh, and you mentioned some of the facts that we do know. Just take us through, because it has been a week of, of, of differing police lines that have come through and, and so much just startling in the fact of these guys could have been stopped. Yeah. Uh, the police say they've detained more than 70 people, Robin, thus far. One of them is a wealthy Sri Lankan spice merchant by the name of Mohammed Ibrahim. And the Prime Minister said that he may have even met this man, that's how powerful and important he is in Sri Lankan society, at previous business functions. Mr. Ibrahim has been detained, police tell us, for uh, suspicion that he aided and abetted the terrorists because two of his sons were suicide bombers, the police say. One of them is believed to have blown up the Cinnamon Hotel down the road from where I'm standing. And here's where it gets very disturbing. That man, Ilham Ibrahim, we hear from a high-level Sri Lankan government official, was actually detained back in January of this year when police raided a suspected training camp in the north of the country and found around 100 kilograms of explosives. They detained this man and had him on a four-month detention, but he was released after about a week amid pressure from high-level government officials. This is one of the individuals who was in police custody and then released and then accused of carrying out suicide bomb attacks being a contributor to the attacks that killed at least 359 people. Yet again, a missed opportunity, Robin. Yeah, it certainly is. So a lot of the puzzle pieces coming together in terms of what we know. What is the one big thing we still don't know? What were the international connections? Uh, was ISIS in fact part of it and it has claimed responsibility? Were there international operatives behind this as well? And there are the concerns that there still may be terrorists out there. The Catholic Church here has canceled all religious services until April 29th. And now the Muslim uh, Affairs religious minister here in the country has urged all Muslims to cancel Friday prayers in mosques tomorrow and instead to pray at home 
in a sign of a show of solidarity with their, their Christian fellow citizens. That's a sign of how fluid the security situation still is. Still such a Robin. heightened state of security. Ivan Watson and your team there on the ground, thanks so much for all of your reporting there in Colombo. Thanks, Ivan.